Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to our next episode of Ice TV. Um, I, well, it's uh, kind of a bizarre day in Toronto, I have to say. I had the heat on earlier, and now I've turned it off, and I think I need to put on the air conditioner, but I'm not quite sure. So um, either way, as uh, you all know, I think it's always tea time. So whether that was with a hot tea this morning when I turned on the heater or perhaps a nice chilled glass of tea um, this afternoon, we shared some really, really interesting recipes with you last week, had some great guests on, and today's certainly no exception. Really excited about our guests today, some of whom you will recognize, a couple of new faces for you, um, and I think that's really the fun about this. Uh, we feature our members and celebrate our members on ICE TV and uh, really, really have a lot of fun seeing not only their perspective um, from their specific companies that they're speaking on because they are usually featuring some interesting blends and flavors and types of teas that they have within their companies, but also their own personal twist on how to make it really special. Um, you know, we're sharing some really simple recipes with you. Um, but, uh, you know, once you've mastered some of the simples, you can take it up a notch. It doesn't have to be super complicated. But just thinking about beverages, the beverages that you know, and adding the tea element to it. And I think that's what I really love about all of this. So with that, I would like to introduce to you our first guest. Marika Devienne has been working in the tea business for the past 20 years with a focus on sourcing traditional teas from China, Japan, and Sri Lanka. She lived in China for six years, studying the art of Chinese tea, and has traveled extensively in China, Japan, Sri Lanka, India, Mexico, Trinidad, Greece, Turkey, the list does go on, um, all in the pursuit of the perfect cup. Prior to joining David's team, Marika owned her own tea shop for 10 years in the famed Jean Talon market in Montreal. Two years ago, Marika joined the Davids Tea family and currently works as project lead in the content department. She is, however, also host and producer of Davids Tea recently launched podcast, Steeping Together, Love the Name, where she interviews Davids Tea insiders and other tea enthusiasts about various topics regarding the vast world of tea. Hi, Marika. Hi, Shabnam. Thank you so much for having me. How are you? You know, it's a weird day in Montreal, too. It's overcast. It's not overcast. It's kind of windy, but I got a cup of tea, so well, I don't care about any of that. <laughs> See, there you go. This is why tea people are just happy. Yes. We, we, we really do know that the answer to everything is a cup of tea. We found right? the solution. We're good. There you go. We're right. good. <laughs> so you you shared some great recipes with us last year, and I've said this a few times, um, you know, throughout, uh, well, last year as well as in when I started off introducing this year, that when we started this journey um, last year, I thought, how many different types of iced tea can there possibly be? I mean, I'm going to ask, I, I'm going to be on live and I'm going to have to act surprised. <laughs> great. <laughs> um, because how many variations can there possibly be? But I didn't have to pretend because there really are that many different variations. Absolutely. I mean, there is a tea for every person, every moment. When we think of just, you know, unfragranced Camellia sinensis, they, they're estimating that there are 5,000 varieties on the yeah. planet. If you count everything else, the, the multitude of options before you in creation are astounding and endless. And so, yeah, there really are so many, many different permutations of tea drinks that you can make for yourself. And summer is the perfect time to play because you're not only playing with steeping time or ingredients, but then you're also playing the hot or iced game. And I think that that the word that you just use is the perfect word play. I think that people shouldn't be afraid to play. And, you know, the kitchen is a really fun way or place to play with our beverages. You know, we're sort of raised not to play with our food as kids, but playing and, right? I mean, but playing and Absolutely. experimenting is how, you know, we discover some of the greatest or unexpected combinations. It absolutely is. And not only do you discover 
new flavors or rediscover old flavors. I think that every time you're playing with your food, because I'm going to take that and I'm going to run with it, Shabnam, yeah. every time you're playing with your food, you are ultimately discovering something new about yourself as well. Like, why did that work? Why didn't that work? And I think people are afraid of playing because it can bring up so many, it can bring up a sense of failure. It can bring up a sense of success. But really, when you're playing in the kitchen, as long as you're not presenting anything to your new mother-in-law, where's the victim like have fun you know when you've got if you're making something for the prime minister yeah. follow the recipe do yeah. not deviate but when yeah. it's just for you and the people around you who you love they will taste the fun they will taste yeah. the innovation and that there's nothing better than that you know marika i think that who cares about the recipe let's have a little, <laughs> let's have a little therapy shall we um yes. I, but, and we will get to the recipe because you've got two really fun ones for us. But um, the, it's, it's the fear of failure that I think stops people. And, and this is what I say to people when, you know, when I'm talking to them about cooking with tea, um, whether it's, you know, cooking, cooking, savory uh, or, or sweet or, or even making iced tea recipes, whatever the case may be. What I always say is you will fail. You're going to fail. Not everything that you do is going to work. Sometimes you're going to create combinations and you can go, oh, what the hell was I thinking there? But it's by putting together things that um, perhaps are different, are unusual, are things that perhaps you wouldn't have thought about. It's, it's when they do work and they will work, you'll have hits as well. Those are the biggest surprises. And I think that let's keep going with the therapy because quite frankly, I enjoy it. Um, if you don't fail, you don't grow. Yeah, there's no there's no way around it. So the success, the, the sweetness of success is yeah. undeniable. But I think personally, as a culture, we should move away from this shaming of failure because you tried it and a lot of people don't try. And if you tried it, you already you're already 10 steps ahead of the game. You're Couldn't on the me. right path. Totally. Absolutely. So with that said, <laughs> let me fail my recipes. No. <laughs> preach, 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 preach. Okay, lovely lady. Um, you are going to uh, the therapy lesson today was free, by the way. That was your bonus. Exactly. Um, but uh, so you are going to do some. I loved when I saw this because you're going to take us back a few decades into something that um, I know some people do, especially with their kids. But I have to admit, I haven't made one of these in a very, very long time. And you're going to do two different types of floats for us, right? Yes, I am. Because okay. to me, when um, we came into contact about this, I was like, okay, what does summer mean to me? And summer is nostalgia. Summer yeah. is decadent and fun and trying new things. And I grew up loving root beer floats, just mm -hmm. loving root beer floats. And I thought, you know, we could do that with tea. It's really yeah. easy. And I feel like every time... I've had these conversations with you. I start my little preamble with, I'm a working mother of two, so I don't have time. <laughs> so, but it's true. I'm a working mother of two. You're I, a mother, don't, working mother of two. <laughs> I don't have time yeah. to like, you know, but I still want to bring that sense of fun and enjoyment and playfulness to the things that I'm presenting to my kids. And so that's when I started making tea pop floats. Okay. So teapop let's start with what a teapop is yeah. a teapop is essentially you're going to make a very concentrated form of tea so you're going to use about 20 to 30 grams for four ounces of water to make a really concentrated um liquid 20 and to 30, okay that's a lot okay that's a lot it's a lot but mm -hmm. it makes for you're making a tea soda essentially right. and so right. what you do with a teapop is you make this concentrate it's about the same as you would make for a latte so okay. that's about the same and then once it's ready so i already pre-steeped this because i was like i should i should do my job um <laughs> over a cup of ice you're just going to oh wait i picked a cup that's really big just pour that concentrate over like that okay and then if you're just making a tea pop, grab your carbonated water. Perfect. Easy. Done. And you could stop there if you wanted. I could. It's a four minute steep time. It's the exact same amount of time as it takes to make a hot tea. I think that's what discourages a lot of people from doing iced tea is that there's some kind of notion out there that it's somehow more complex yeah. than it is to make hot tea. And it's more tea 
but yeah. the same amount of time. And so you can do it. And it's so much better to make your own soda than it is to, I mean, I'm not going to talk about what's in soda. I'm going to talk about how heavy soda is and how I don't like lugging it up my stairs. Okay. That's why I don't That's like fair. <laughs> That's fair. For a bunch of other reasons. Yeah. But yeah, I just took my tea, this is frozen raspberry. What I just made is orange, you glad. It's an orange flavored rooibos. And okay. think summer popsicle. Think popsicles like melting in the sun, running down mm -hmm. your hands, getting all sticky. Like that's the popsicle that I'm talking about when we're okay. talking about orange, you glad. Okay. And so, yeah, I made my concentrate. I put my tea pop. And then because this is an orange flavored tea i chose vanilla ice cream okay i didn't just choose any vanilla ice cream because even though this is quick and fast i chose tahitian vanilla ice cream. <clears throat> tell us why tahitian vanilla okay quick rundown on vanilla there's a bunch of countries on the planet that produce exceptional vanillas each with their own specific scent terroir process everything tahitian vanilla is typically the largest of the varietals it's very fat and very humid unlike madagascar vanilla it's not as rich in um one essential oil it's got vanillin but it has other essential oils so it's not just straight up vanilla it's a very floral vanilla and okay. i love floral vanillas because they last much longer in your mouth. Like the retro okay. olfactive yeah. um, exercise that happens when you have Madagascar vanilla, it's kind of overwhelming. It's that bourbon vanilla that everybody right. knows about. And it's really strong and it just kind of hits you. Tahitian vanilla lingers gently and reminds you that you deserve this moment. Oh. And so that's why I go with Tahitian vanilla because I now, deserve I this be, I want to be one of your kids that you make beautiful things for <laughs> All right. So I just am scooping two big scoops of vanilla ice cream onto my tea pop float like this. Love it. Um, I know what you're thinking. Marika, that's a very large cup. That seems like, is that 32 ounces? It is. It is, Shabnam. It's 32 ounces that I've what done. What I was here. actually thinking, Marika, was with a cup that big, it deserves a second scoop of ice cream. <laughs> you know what? Fair <laughs> enough. You thought I was going to complain about the size of the cup. No. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's do it. So I just really like this. As I said, nostalgic, refreshing, fun, easy, fast. Um, and I honestly, I serve this to my kids as a dessert. Like this is a Love full it. on yeah. dessert, right? And Look once you it. mix it up, the creaminess of the orange and the vanilla comes together and you have an, a, 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 a creamsicle. A I, I, that's a, okay. So that's exactly the word I was just going to use because you used vanilla with it. You're, mm -hmm. you've got this creamy element. So you're actually creating a cream sickle. I am. Where, right. Whereas if you don't like that flavor and I don't know why you wouldn't, but perhaps somebody out there in the universe doesn't like that flavor. Mm -hmm. You could do that with a sorbet. And right? that's exactly what I'm doing. So I've chosen oh, our sorry. frozen raspberry. No, that's okay. I did not know this. Sorry. I'm deeply offended. No. <laughs> No, the, the, the <laughs> I'm exactly, no, the, the, the ice cream version is really fun. Cause like I said, it's really decadent. It's a full yeah. on dessert. You know, uh, if yeah. my kids ask for like cake after I'm like, you already had your dessert, you're done. Um, but I think, uh, if you don't want like a full on cake in a cup, essentially, yeah. Yeah. um, you can also take, uh, uh, an herbal that's very fruity and yeah. I chose raspberry here and then I'm going to use lemon sorbet. Okay. Because I want that zesty. It's summer. It's hot, hopefully. And I want it to be zesty and cooling and refreshing. And so I I, same exact same recipe, exact same yeah. principle. I put a little bit less of the sorbet because it's lemon. So I don't want the acidifier yeah. of the raspberry and the lemon to overdo it. Same thing. Perfect. Perfect. So um, tell everybody, the first tea that you used was? Orange You Glad. Roy Boss orange, orange, you glad. And the second one, the second tea you used is what? Frozen raspberry. Frozen raspberry. And um, people can find this on your website? Absolutely. Okay. But this recipe um, was developed exclusively for the Tea Association. So for the recipe, you're going to have to go on the Tea Association to see it. Will it eventually end up on the David's Tea website? Quite possibly. But for now, we really, you know, we engineered this for this conversation because it's a conversation worth having.
I love it. 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 I love the nostalgia. I love that you've made something um, with botanicals, which means, you know, you can do it for your kids. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the the vanilla ice cream or the sorbet, whatever it is that you decide to use, that's the sweetener. So you yes. don't need to sweeten the iced tea on top of that. I mean, if you want to go ahead, but I, I kind of feel like you might go into a diabetic coma after that. I mean, I feel like there's going to have to be some kind of doctor's warning but before I, that recipe goes out. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. I would stay away from sweetening it um, mm-hmm. because you're getting plenty of it from your ice cream. Mm-hmm. I love it. And um, we could adult this by adding like a little shot of something. I have the adult version. Go ahead. It's in my mind. I didn't share it with you guys because I didn't know do if it. we didn't have time. Okay, 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 okay. So what you do is you take a very strong CTC cut black tea. We want okay. it like as black as night, right? Okay. Really like the, you want the tannins and everything to just be very, very present. You pour okay. that over ice. You add your tea, your carbonated water. And then if you fancy like me, you get an Earl Grey flavored ice cream. Yeah. Oh, I love. Yeah. And then, and then, because everybody's gone to bed and they're leaving you alone. Yes. You just put a hint of cognac just because. Oh, yum. Because. Just a hint. Okay. You know what I'm doing tonight. (laughs) And maybe tonight's going to start in an hour. I don't know. Hey, it's five o'clock somewhere. It's always five o'clock somewhere. I love that so much. Thank you, Marika. It's always fun talking to you. I did want to, there was one thing I was going to say, actually, just reminded me. Um, the, 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 the pop, and, and, and I, I know we've got another guest waiting, but um, really quickly, the pop itself, mm-hmm. you did it um, with carbonated water on top, but I just wanted to tell everybody out there, if you've got soda streams at home, make an ice, right? That's what I do. I just didn't do it because I'm in office today. But that's what I do. Yeah. So if you have a soda stream at home, use that. Like make your iced tea and then put it into your soda stream to carbonate it. Absolutely. No, that's exactly what I do at home. I didn't have the courage to carry the full machine into office today. And so I just stopped and bought carbonated water. But the soda stream there. has changed my iced tea game yeah. in the summer. Just changed it. Yeah. We totally Cold forget about these. carbonated. Things cold brew carbonated tea. There you go. Okay, lovely. Always a pleasure. I could talk to you for hours. (laughs) Thank you so much. It's always so much fun. Have a great day. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. All right. Well, that was a very fun conversation with Marika. And uh, I am going to just continue on um, and introduce my next guest. And our next guest is Josephina Chapman. Um, who is part of the Tea Desire team and acts as the store manager for the Nanaimo store. For those of you not in Canada, that is British Columbia. Tea Desire was founded by Tony and Heidi Alpers in May of 2005. They bring European and Canadian market experience to their tea stores, and their teas are mainly imported from century-old suppliers in Europe with a long-standing reputation for the highest quality. Hello, Josephina. Hello? Hi, Shabnam. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you for being here. How are you? Thank you for having me. Uh, I'm well, thank you. How about you? I'm really good. Thank you. Well, Josephina, you are going to share two recipes with us today. Um, matcha with Greek mountain tea ice twist. And the second I hear is going to be a fruity candy punch yes then, um the idea is the matcha i love matcha yeah but so far we always heard like making iced tea is matcha latte but we would like to show that we can do with any tea we like so today we use the brick mountain tea mint and then it's easy. So we just brew you know, for icy, by the way. We love to use this if a uh, craft. Oh, that's beautiful. The reason is we can, it is. And also the amazing part is the ice cooler. So we oh. make the ice in the tube the night before, freeze the water in the tube. 
and then we just put into the glass carafe and make it cold and when the ice melt it won't dilute the flavor of your tea i love that so the ice it's goes really in. i love it perfect very nice josephina can you Ooh, tell us it's just it's Josephina, can you tell us what is the Greek mountain tea that you're using? What is that? Oh, I'm sorry. So the Greek mountain tea, it's uh, originally from Greek mountain. It's uh, has been used by the ancient Greek. It has a lot of antioxidants and many benefits. And people believe also it's good to boost for lung health. So it's, it's an herbal? Oh, I think I lost connection. Oh, I think we don't have a great okay. connection, Josephine. Are you there? <laughs> That's it. There's a lost connection. Is it an herbal? Yes, I'm here now. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's okay. Is it an herbal? Yes, it is an herbal. And okay. then our Greek mountain tea mint, it mixed with the mint. Perfect. Okay. So um sorry, you so you're gonna make that with matcha. It's an herbal. And it's well, it's also known as the sideritis or iron wart. It's very nice. It has a citrus and mint taste with sweet undertone. Okay, great. So show us how you're gonna make the tea. Oh, I okay. are you there? I'm sorry. So I'm okay. back. So yeah, this is this is herbal. I'm sorry, that, no, this no, is that's herbal okay. and known as the sideritis. Sideritis or iron wort, and it's uh, it has a taste of uh, citrus and mint with a sweet undertone. Perfect. That we think it will be perfect match with the matcha. Okay. So it's very easy. So just brew uh, the next before, um, and then we just pour the tea. And then we prepare the matcha. So you've made the Greek mountain tea and you've poured that over ice. And now you're making the matcha. And then the matcha and then just pour over the uh, Greek mountain tea. And it's Lovely. really nice, has two colors, I'm sorry. It has two colors of tea. Oh, so it blends really nicely. Just blend really nicely. It doesn't have to be with herbals, Shabnam. It's also nice with fruits. For okay. example, the second type, uh, the second tea we uh, introduced is the our pear garden. So, um, Josephina, did you make the tea so for our pear garden? Mm -hmm. And similar idea is just, but with the fruit, we like to recommend to use a little bit of sweetener because the okay. sugar will, or the sweet will give a, a complement to the fruit flavor. Okay. And then just, uh, okay, the bit more, so I'm going to add a little bit of ice. And then we pour the fair garden fruit tea. And then again, pour the matcha. Beautiful. It's nice. It has two, yeah, two different colors. And then it's ready to serve. It's a lovely color combination. So, and you sweetened it, Josephina, with a simple well, syrup. Is that right? Just simple syrup. You can use also flavored with your own tea. So, for example, if you like to uh, use pear garden, if you like to use pear garden syrup as well it yeah well very nice okay so um so basically I mean, matcha 
Please. I'm sorry. So basically, matcha iced tea, you can use, you can mix and match with any tea, your favorite tea. Wonderful. I love that so much because, as you said at the beginning, what, what's very common is to do like a, an iced matcha latte. And we forget sometimes that you can mix matcha with another tea and create a whole new type of beverage, right? Yes. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Josephine. And you can pick your own favorite tea as well. Exactly. So it doesn't yes. have to limit it to vanilla or chocolate. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. Um, the possibilities are endless. Well, thank you very much, Josephina, for joining us. Um, anybody looking for these teas, they can find them on your website, Tea Desire, yes? Oh, we've lost. Okay, I'm there, back again. <laughs> okay, all right, Josephina, I think, I think the internet yes, is not our friend now. today. Um, so anybody looking for the teas that Josephina made, um, like the mountain, um, Greek mountain tea, as well as the, the fruit tea, matcha, and so many other types and varieties, you can visit them on their website and try some of the flavors and create your own concoction with matcha. Thank you, Josephina. It was lovely to see you and uh, have a good day. Bye. You too. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Take care. All right. Well, some really fun ideas. And you know what? She's absolutely right because I know I do it. I tend to just use my matcha and um, I will, well, obviously I'll have it hot, but if I want it iced, um, I do tend to think of a latte combination, but I don't think I've ever actually combined matcha now that I think about it with another tea with the exception of genmaicha, but that feels a little likey-likey. So don't be afraid to marry things that don't necessarily come top of mind for you. Love that idea. Love that tip. And so simple to make. With that, I am um, really pleased to introduce my next guest to you, Amy Taylor. For 30, well, for over 30 years, Amy has been a tea enthusiast and a professional tea leaf and card reader. She's the sole owner of the Art of Tea and Tassio Mansi's Mystic Tea Room, established in 2009, where she has her Tassio Mansi Museum open to the public and sees clients for consultation. Amy has contributed to many magazines, media outlets, and blogs as an authority on Tassio Mansi, and is also in the process of writing a book about the mystical side of tea. Amy is also a certified tap tea sommelier, can't forget to mention that. Um, and I'm really pleased to introduce everybody to Amy. Hi, Amy. How are you? I'm good. I'm having a bee buzz around me, but everything is fine. <laughs> well, it's I really can't nice. see the bee, so you're being very, very zen about the whole thing. Well, it's a bumblebee, and I know he's not going to hurt me, so it's okay. all good. <laughs> all right. It's well, really um, nice to talk with you. It's lovely to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. It looks gorgeous out where you are. You're in your garden. I am indeed. I am. Nice. So um, before we even dive into, I know you're making us summer of love. Um, so before we dive into that and you tell us um, about that, I'm going to give you in like two minutes, tell everybody what Tassie Mansi is, because I don't think it's something everybody fully understands. Very true. And and so Tassio Mansi, simply put, is the art and practice of divining the future with tea leaves in a teacup. So it's pretty simple when you think about it because it's loose leaf tea with those tea leaves. And uh, it's I just read the dregs of people's cups, essentially, is what that means. But it's a history. It has a, a very long history that, uh, you know, I have in my museum where um, I show over 120 years worth of tea leaf reading related um, cup sets. Uh, there's over 60 cup sets in the museum, uh, paper, books, all kinds of neat stuff. And it's an art form that is actually still practiced today. So uh, obviously. I love it. Um, <laughs> and you know what, Amy, just occurred to me, we've known each other for a lot of years. Let's not talk about how many years, but a lot of years. And you've never read my cup. I just realized. It's going to happen. Shabnan, it's going to happen. I promise you. We're going to have to do that. We're going to have to make that happen. All right, lovely. Um, let's ask 
see what is the summer of love so the summer of love is actually a really simple tea that can be made now i love to cold brew my teas which means that i i don't use boiled water at all and i have this handy dandy pitcher that comes with one of these strainers in it and you don't have to use these but if you decide to it just makes it much much easier and you can see that the leaves when they actually are cold brewed tend to actually really rehydrate nicely yeah. uh, in the cold water in the fridge so i just wanted to make sure that people realize that even though that we're not using a boiled water with this we're still able to extract these beautiful delicate flavors of the tea and the tea that i'm using today is a bimudan or a white peony white tea nice. very delicate flavors it's like the champagne of teas really mm -hmm. in my opinion and if you if you add it it was funny one of your earlier guests you were talking about using a soda stream and i think that if you actually use this tea in your soda stream then you can have this beautiful sparkling white tea which really makes it like a champagne i think so, so that's going to be the base of our tea, but let's start with some of the things that I'm adding into it. And as you know, I'm a community her herbalist. Um, you know, we've had many conversations in the past about this, especially with the herbal mod modules. And um, I'm using um, a really common herb that is found in most gardens. Um, this is lemon balm, so it's fresh lemon balm. And mm -hmm. then down here, what you're seeing is um, what is called either um, wild rose or dog rose is Rosa canina. Mm -hmm. I just lost a petal. Anyway, gorgeous rose scent on it. And you can find them growing anywhere. They're super hardy, super thorny. Be careful with it. Um, I harvested both of these yesterday after the rain. These petals that you see here actually were um, left over in the fridge overnight. And so they're perfectly usable today. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the um, lemon balm leaves and stem. Not that one, this one. Um, and I'm going to um, tear them up into my cup. And then what so, I'm going to do. So, so Amy, so the, the, the lemon balm you're using, um, you're, you, you, we just saw you, you plucked that off. But the rose, you said you harvested first. So you picked them and you said you put them in the fridge? I did. I actually, so I, I pulled them off of the flowers. They're really, really easy to pull off of the flowers. I'll use this one as an example. You literally just have to pull them off the flower. It's very, very simple, easy to do. And you can keep them overnight in the fridge for a couple of days. This is a trick that I learned from my floral days. Um, this is used quite often for um, weddings and stuff as well. So um, you can save your rose petals really easily if you nice. have an event on the weekend. You know, just make sure that they're not sprayed rose petals. So mm -hmm. um, in my recipe, I was really um, not as generous as I'm gonna be with my own tea today, but um, mm -hmm. there's my leaves in my cup. Okay. I'm actually going to put four of these rose petals in um, and then I'm going to use something called a spurtle, which is not this purpose, but it's going to muddle those herbs. And the whole point of doing the muddling is that you're breaking open all of those natural oils and um, scents and flavor profiles of those herbs in the bottom of your cup. So it becomes a bit of a muddled mess. Yep. That's why it's called muddling. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I'm going to do is I have these really fun ice cubes that I made last night and they're made Gorgeous. with, um, right? Aren't they beautiful? And yeah. they're made with um, uh, butterfly blue pea flower. So I'm going to put some of these guys in here. And what I did with each of these um, uh, ice cubes is I added in a couple rose petals, uh, dried rose petals and dried uh, calendula because it just adds that bright, cheery color to it. So I'm going to add all of these guys in here because they're really cute and that you can see the blue of the uh, of the pea flower on in left over in my cup. And then just to add to some of that really beautiful summery flavor, I'm going to take some gorgeous Ontario uh, strawberries. Yes, they are starting to hit the stores now, so get them yeah, when you can. It is, it is strawberry season. Truly, right? Um, and then I'm just going to slice them up. So these are monsters, so I'm only going to use one in my cup but I'm gonna slice that little strawberry up, throw it on the top. Now, at this point, if you want, you can add a slice of lemon, but I'm not gonna do that because I just wanna work with the flavors of the herbs in this gorgeous strawberry. Okay. And then I'm just gonna pour my tea over top. Look at that, look at all those colors. Beautiful. Isn't that pretty? 
Mm. That's why it's called the summer of love, right? Summer of love. So, I get it now. Right? I so get you it. get all this gorgeous freshness in your cup. And it's a really lovely, light, refreshing tea. And then all the petals from the ice cubes start to drop to the bottom. It just makes a really lovely, lovely, refreshing iced tea. Now, if you really wanted to bump it up, yeah. you could actually throw in a nice ounce of vodka or a really nice floral gin, I think, would be gorgeous with this as well. Oh, oh. right. Yeah. So, so now I don't have a stir stick, so I'm going to use my knife. So I'm just going to okay. stir that up and mix this baby together. And now I'm, I'm actually just salivating at the idea of having a sip of this. So I'm just going to do that. <laughs> so yeah, Well, you absolutely you. should. Cheers to you. I wish I could. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. So cheers to you. So you, um, a question. I mean, you know, you, you have some really clean flavors in there, right? The lemon balm and the, the rose petals with the white pine rattan. So really nice and clean um, and refreshing. But if you yes. wanted to, you could put the strawberries in with the balm and the rose and muddle that as well, couldn't you? 100%. And then that would just jump the flavor up even more. Yeah. So I just wanted the subtlety of the strawberry. Yeah. Now, another tea that this would be really nice to do this with would be a really, really beautiful, clean green tea. So yeah. I would recommend probably a Japanese sencha of some kind, mm -hmm. um, because I think that it would just pull even more of those flavors. And of course, Japanese sencha, as you know, does really well with the cold brewing process too. Yeah, yeah. So you're getting those nice subtlety green, uh, grassy sort of a little bit of the marine notes as well, but more grassy flavor tones from it. So yeah, it'd be gorgeous. Love it. Do you always have a pitcher of iced tea in your fridge in the summer? All summer long, my husband drinks it by the ga gallon loads. I mean, like, honestly, we always have iced tea in the house in the summer. And if it's not this one, it's going to be another one. So lots What's to your choose fave? from. Do you have a fave? Well, if I had a favorite, it's probably um, my Be Well tea uh, when it's iced. It's an elderberry based tea. And um, the, the Be Well tea, I blended it, I created it as a wellness blend um, that can be used as the base for making um, uh, elderberry syrup, which everybody likes to do in the autumn months and stuff. But I like to have it as an iced tea as well. And again, cold brewing it, it just makes it so much easier and, and nice. you can do this anywhere. Nice. Love, love, love. And really the, the clean flavors um, and, uh, and, and, and the ice cubes. I mean, I talk about freezing your tea all the time. Make ice cubes, people. It's the easiest thing to do, especially if you make a pot of tea for yourself and you don't finish the entire pot. Do not waste your tea. Make it really? into, right? Put it into an ice tray, freeze it, um, and use those ice cubes to either um uh chill down your tea or use it in a cocktail 100 percent, 100 percent. and you know what there's so many fun little ice cube trays out there i didn't bring it out but I, these are like little gem style uh ice nice. cubes. so you can get fun shapes into yeah. your ice cubes as well if you wanted to there do are, that. so i mean yeah no you know what you're so right there are um you can do them as round you can do them as big blocks i mean there's a lot of fun stuff out there i think that uh one of the uh, one of the things that sort of came out of um, COVID lockdown is people experimenting with uh, doing interesting beverages at home because their their local coffee shops were shut down, right? Oh, abs yeah, absolutely, absolutely. It was amazing how many people I had coming to my shop just basically saying, and especially last summer, it was really interesting. Last summer, there was a lot of people when they were able to finally come back into the shop and they were saying, I want to do an iced tea. What's the easiest way to do it? And when I tell them about cold brewing, it just blows their mind. They just don't even realize yeah. how easy that is. Nice. But I mean, you know, you can do this with any tea. Any yeah. tea can be made into an iced tea. And that's the beauty of the versatility of tea. Perfect. Love it. And love that you played with your garden with it as well. Always. Well, was, I'm always playing in my garden. <laughs> always playing in the garden. Um, always. So good to see you, Amy. Good to see you too, Shabman. I look forward to the next time our paths cross and may be done with beautiful tea. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Bye now. Have a great okay. day. You too. Well, that was a fun recipe and um, super fun that Amy took us outside, which uh, I have to say is pretty daring of her because the last person who did that um, had to 
I won't divulge who, but they had to bribe, I heard afterwards, they had to bribe the workers working next door with boxes of tea to get them to stop their construction <laughs> for about 20 minutes while they were going to be on. So um, Amy, you are a brave, brave woman. I don't even have my windows open right now because the Lord knows what's going on outside. Um, so I am very pleased to introduce my next guest to you, who you do know. Um, Katie Sear founded the Monarch Tea Company in late 2013 with the vision of bringing together the traditional eloquence of tea time with a modern twist. Katie is a certified tea sommelier professional and loves offering hands-on tea talks to others. We've been lucky enough to have Katie on a few times. And it's good to see you, Katie. How are you? Hi, Shannon. I'm great. How are you? I'm so good. Good. Enjoying a bit of the sunshine, which is nice. Yes, exactly. And no perfect way to do that than a beautiful ice drink. So I'm excited yeah. to be here. Perfect. So you are going to do for us, and um, you're going to do a cream Earl Grey sour. And I have to admit, you had me at sour. Mm -hmm. Same. So you're a sour fan, like you do whiskey sours or, yeah. It's funny. I love them too. So I don't know if it's a tea thing that we're really attracted to like interesting, unique flavors or things that are quite pronounced or what it is, but I have, um, for me, even just right now, even say, talking about the word sour, if I even say lemon or yeah, I get, yeah. You mentioned that in a previous webinar on the sensory development. Yeah, thing, like, to salivate. I immediately start to salivate and tingle. I have a physical, actual, yeah, I'm salivating right now. So yeah. it's, I'm, <laughs> it's I know what you're doing after this. Bizarre. Oh my God. Like well, I'm glad I picked the right drink then and I'm excited to share this because this is kind of a twist on a traditional sour. So I'm using okay. a little bit of unconventional ingredients and I actually have a few different options for folks at home. One Perfect. to make into a mocktail and one to make this into a vegan version. So I have a few different fun, um, ways. So I'll be making it. I'll show the recipe and then I'll show some little hacks and tips and tricks for this if we have time as well. Perfect. All okay. yours. Amazing. So hi everyone. I'm Katie. Thank you for having me. So today we're going to be doing our Earl Grey Sour. So first I'll show you how to make it. And then as I mentioned, I'll show you like the little components and the individual ways we can build this recipe together. So first at home, and what I love about this is really simple um, ratios. So we're gonna do one ounce of tea infused gin, and I'll be okay. showing you how to make that very shortly. So we have one ounce here of that. We have one ounce of lemon juice. I'm just using the kind in the bottle, but you can do fresh squeezed lemon juice, whatever you have at home and ready to go. Mm -hmm. Doing an ounce of simple syrup, which will also show some options for that after class as well. And then we have one ounce of either egg white or aquafaba, which for those that don't know what that is. You're making a real sour. <laughs> so this one, um, and I'll explain to folks after, but we have two versions to make this. You can use egg white or you can use aquafaba, which is chickpea water, which sounds funny. Um, but that's basically how to make a vegan version of this if you want to omit the egg. Perfect. And then we're going to use any of our loose leaf tea we have, and we just need a pinch on the side, and that will be our garnish. And then for folks at home, you want to find a cocktail uh, shaker if you don't have one at home. Even a simple mason jar will work great. So you don't need to have any crazy fancy equipment. And then some ice nearby. So really simple. I have my shaker ready to go. I'm going to add my ounce of tea infused gin, mm -hmm. my ounce of lemon juice, mm -hmm. ounce of simple syrup. And if you prefer it less sweet, you could use three quarters of an ounce, mm -hmm. half an ounce, personal preference. And then um, our egg white or ounce of aquafaba, all that in our little dude. And then adding our ice, a generous amount of ice. Now, forgive me, you're gonna hear some shaking with this one, especially with an egg white or aquafaba, we do need to shake vigorously in order to create that nice little foam that we see when we order a traditional either whiskey sour or gin sour. So I'm gonna just shake for about 20 seconds. I'll do it less just for the, the sake of the- No problem. Yeah. Okay. No problem. So um, for those for those that are watching, I got excited when I hear egg white because not everybody makes a sour um, properly. And a lot of the time the egg white is left out. Um, but as Katie said, you can absolutely use the alternative, um, which is the fava juice. Ex yes, yeah. exactly. 
And sometimes I've even ordered them at bars that make it improperly and they don't even bother with any sort of foam. As you mentioned, they'll either just leave I it know. Be like a bar lime. So it's really fun when you take the They're also not using real lemon. That is, I've noticed that many times. Yes, exactly. So you could use a coupe glass at home. I'm just using kind of a regular glass just so folks can see at home. So you'll notice your, you'll know it's ready to pour when your um, shaker gets that nice frost on the outside. I'm just gonna use a strainer. If you don't have a strainer, no worries, whatever you have at home. And I'll show folks what this looks like in just a moment. So I'm gonna pour this out into my little glass. And the harder you shake, the more dense your foam will be. So I mm -hmm. took a little lighter for the sake of the um, broadcast. So I don't have too thick of a foam yet, but I did mm -hmm. straight, shook very hard and you'll get a, yeah. you can get a half inch to an inch thick foam. And then what you're gonna actually do on top, just a couple little leaves as a garnish. So it's a little bit harder to see here, but you get a beautiful mm -hmm. color. And then the foam actually kind of gives a little bit of a weight so you can have your leaves sitting on top. So cheers. Cheers to you, love. Mm. So for those that aren't familiar with shower, uh, sours, as Shab and I know and love, with this one, what I love is it's super complex. So you definitely get your initial very sour um, mouthfeel, but then you're getting a gentle sweetness. And then the complexity of using an Earl Grey or a cream Earl Grey is you're actually getting these beautiful bergamot vanilla notes. And it creates a whole other element in your cocktail that just is so fun and exciting to drink. And it looks beautiful when you serve it to your guests. You can kind of see here now there's a nice little color. It's quite unique. Nice. So cheers, everyone. This is the Earl Grey Sour. Cheers to you. So um, Earl Grey, for those of you listening, is a black tea that's been flavored with um, bergamot, oil of bergamot. And yes. bergamot is a citrus fruit, which is why using it as a sour is actually a perfect match. We tend to talk about bergamot as something flowery, but it's not. It's not floral. It's actually so citrus, true. right? So true. Yeah. Perfect and combination. If we have a minute, I can show folks how to use um, yeah. their own. Okay, perfect. So yeah, great observations on using the bergamot or anything bergamot infused in a sour. So when we see these things with tea infused, gin or vodkas, how does that happen? So I'm actually doing infusing some in the background right now. So for those folks that um, have at home, like the biodegradable tea bags or anything mm -hmm. like a filter that they can use, I scooped about one to one and a half teaspoons of our cream Earl Grey right into this little tea bag. And then I added about half a cup of gin, and the mm -hmm. recipe isn't, will be included too, into a little glass. And then I just steep it for about an hour. So this has only been steeping about 20 minutes here, but it's really cool as you watch your gin, it's gonna get darker and darker. Um, and you can keep this up to two weeks. I just keep it kind of in the fridge. You could keep it in a mason jar in your uh, alcohol cupboard, but it makes a beautiful, um, beautiful gin that adds this extra element. And you don't have to just use Earl Grey. If you're using other cocktails, you could use a beautiful, maybe like a Sencha or yeah. white tea. So you can really play around. And then for gin, just a few notes on that. I was using for the class today, just a regular clear gin. This one's mm -hmm. called Citizen Gin from the Yukon. But I also, for those that want a mocktail, I found a really fun gin called Sobri. And they're Canadian, um, they're actually on Dragon's Den is how I found them, but they're alcohol free gin. So that's a great way if you have someone that's DDing or you wanna just make a fun cocktail in the middle of the day that doesn't yeah. involve alcohol. I am infusing in the background some tea right in that too. I find the color just is a little more foggy with the alcohol free gin, whereas regular gin's a bit more clear. So just something to kind of keep in mind, but it's a fun way to add extra elements to your cocktail, either making it vegan like we did today or mm -hmm. your egg white, alcohol free gin or regular gin. So lots of ways we can customize to our own preferences. Love it and so quick and easy to do. So you find that one hour you get you get enough flavor on that one hour steep, huh? You can steep it for those folks that are curious. You could steep it overnight or longer, but yeah. obviously within an hour I got a beautiful color and flavor. You're definitely getting um, yeah. But for those folks that want to do an extra punch, feel free. You could leave it even overnight. Um, I just put a little saucer over top, and um, you'll surprise yourself in the morning with a beautiful gin all ready to go. And you can play with your ratios. I did half a cup because I knew I didn't need a large yeah. amount, but you could customize if you need a larger amount for entertaining. Yeah. Well, I mean, you could do an entire bottle if that's oh, yeah. right. You could take an entire yeah. bottle and just literally a great thing. idea. Absolutely. And just have it ready for your entertaining. And um, and just like with summer entertaining, people are just so curious and excited by tea infused beverages. And it just adds an extra conversation starter to share with your loved ones as you entertain. 
Love it, love it. Um, and uh, good for you for showing variations on it. Really important. Um, Non-alcoholic versions. Um, you just showed a brand that's out there. I've um, picked up Seedless. I've been seeing them. Yeah, I haven't tried them yet. Oh, and you have it on the ready. That's amazing. Oh, yeah, they're gorgeous. Yeah, so see, it's similar kind of branding than what you just said. Yeah, yeah, like that artisan feel, a little bit of a cork. And I believe, are yeah. they Canadian as well? I, I think they're, are they BC? This is a Canadian company yeah. as well. Um, and this is the one, I think that they, this is a citrus one. Grow 42 is a citrus Ooh. one. And they recommend this um, with, uh, with tonic so that it tastes yes. like a gin and tonic. Yes without the alcohol. without alcohol and that's what i found with the sobri as well because i love gin and tonic so with tonic you didn't even know the difference oh yeah kind um, of and with, yeah and there are what's great about them is um you know there are so many people that for whatever their reasons are it's none of anybody's business mm -hmm. please remember that um that they don't want the alcohol and um uh, but they want to still take part in the the fun the ceremony the you know, the exactly. um, celebration theater. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And enjoy a beautiful presented drink, not necessarily with alcohol. Exactly. So having something yeah. like the sober or seed lip or anything else on hand is perfect for that. And Lovely. just for a little update, you can see if the camera's still working that yeah. this drink maintains its beautiful color and foam. And this has now been about 10 minutes after making it. Mm -hmm. So it's a drink that still really withstands as you kind of sip and uh, work your way through it. Perfect. Well, thank you, Katie. As always, for sharing something so beautiful. And awesome. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. Cheers to you. Bye, everyone. Cheers. Thank you. Bye, Katie. Bye. All right. Well, that was another fun recipe. And, um, well, like I said, you say sour and, and I'm done. I don't care what else you're adding to it. I'll just you know, the sour and, 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 and it's a great combination. The, <clears throat> the sour would do really well with a green tea as well, um, especially Japanese green teas, because um, there's something about the combination of a Japanese green tea and citrus that is a, a, a nice combination. Um, so I would actually even try that sour with a nice sencha, which is a perfect segue to my next guest. Um, my next guest is a new face for all of you, and uh, that is Rico. Rico Osaki is the president of Hokusan Tea Canada and is also a licensed Japanese green tea advisor. Hokusan Tea Canada is a wholesale distributor of premium Japanese green tea from Shizuoka, Japan. Rico has been back in Japan for the last six months working at a green tea farm, and that's where she is right now. Ohayo gozaimasu. Hi, Shabnam. How are you? Rico? It is Why definitely like? Ohio Gozaimas. It is 2 a.m. in the morning here. It is, you know, bless your preciousness for doing this at all. So thank you. For, I always say thank you for everybody who does this. But at 2 in the morning is a whole other mm. level of thanks and appreciation that is needed. So you're very welcome. Nice to see you, Shabnam. It's nice to see you. Mm -hmm. So um, you are going to do an iced coconut matcha, and I just think sun and beach and holiday. Exactly. Uh, coconut milk is my favorite. Like co coconut in general is my favorite. It just makes me feel like I'm on vacation, even yeah. at 2 a.m. in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> well, share, tell us what you're making. Rico. So I'm going to be making iced coconut matcha, um, okay. nutty, sweet flavored coconut really complements well with authentic Japanese green tea. Uh, today I'm going to be using this ceremonial grade matcha. You can see the co beautiful color. Beautiful. That's so vibrant. Um, this is from the farm I actually worked for the last, I was invited to participate and exposed to this uh, traditional authentic farm uh it's been 200 years of farm and this is from the actual farm we harvested this year um so you made sometimes... this... yes <laughs> okay. from the ground up you know from the ground up exactly uh so i'm going to be using this ceremonial grade matcha but uh you know if you don't have access to or if you don't have ceremonial grade at home feel free to use any 
afraid of matcha cooking or medium grade. People often ask me, what's the difference between different grading? Um, the matcha, the higher the matcha is actually harvested in the earlier season. So I've mm -hmm. harvested this matcha around April, end of April, uh, early May. And then second mm -hmm. season starts about now till July or so. And then lastly, for the fall, uh, mm -hmm. August, September. So the later it is, the lower the grade goes and the value on the market goes down. So mm -hmm. uh, earlier picked, it's more fresh, uh, created uh, ceremonial grade. Can you just Anyways, quickly... Can you just yeah. quickly explain to everybody what happens to the flavor between uh, the so more, the later um, uh, later the season gets the tea leaves gets bigger so mm -hmm. it grows more and flavor gets less intense and less flavorful so earlier the season mm -hmm. you want it's like a baby leaf we pick we actually hand pick at the farm with like, mm -hmm. uh, there's these legend I worked with, they've been picking tea leaves for like last 70 years. They were like a, you know, machinery like legend. Yeah. Um, this earlier season, all the nutrition gets uh, preserved from the last season. So right. all the year, all the nutrition uh, preserved for the first season. So the earlier season it is, it's more flavorful, umami, and sweetness of the flavor comes out more. Lovely. Okay. So you're going to ice this. Yes. So I'm going to be using this uh, ceremonial grade matcha. We also going to be using coconut milk. You can also mm -hmm. use um, any type of milk lately, uh, legendary milk, oat milk, whatever your choice is. I'm gonna be adding a uh, roasted coconut flake and the regular coconut flake. These are my favorites. Nice. So you roasted, did you buy it or did you roast it yourself? The coconut, it came roasted. You wrote, okay. Yeah. So it's got but three you, you layers of coconut. It. Yeah. Perfect. And okay. I'm gonna be adding a little bit of whipped cream. Whipped cream makes everything better. Nice. Yes. So I'm gonna be adding, so there's two, three simple steps uh, mm -hmm. to this recipe. One, step one, making matcha. Step okay. two, mixing matcha with coconut milk. And then okay. step three, decorating iced coconut matcha. So I'm gonna be adding two teaspoons of matcha into a glass. That's a, that's, that's a, that's a lot of matcha, very generous. Yeah. Well, it's 2 a.m., you know, I got to stay up here. <laughs> yeah. It's about survival at this point, is it? Exactly. <laughs> More caffeine is better at this point. <laughs> Anyways, um, I'm going to be adding oh, about fine. 60 grams of hot boiling water. Okay. Uh, traditionally, uh, authentic way we use these bamboo matcha whisk. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have any at home, it's okay to use any spoons or uh, forks or any regular whisks as long mm -hmm. as the matcha gets dissolved properly. Look at this color. It's beautiful. It's nice and thick, yeah. huh? Nice. And I'm going to be adding, uh, I'm going to add maybe like half glass of ice. Okay. Nice and how is the weather in Toronto? Uh, you know what I was saying earlier, Rico. I it's it's a mixed bag. I had the heat on this morning, and um, oh, I, just turned up. I know. But no, 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 no. But now I have the air conditioning on, so I don't know. Oh, it's, it's typical oh, wow, Toronto weather. Confusing. Yeah. yeah. Confused. I guess so. Confused. That's the weather in Toronto. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to be adding coconut milk into a uh, glass now. Step two, mixing coconut milk with matcha. Mm -hmm. Beautiful matcha I just whisked. Yep. Look at this color. Oh, love it. Love it, Beautiful. love it, love it. And I'm going to be very generous with my whipped cream. 
Gorgeous. And, you know, more is better, so. That's what I said, and more is better. If you want to make it extra special, extra pretty, uh, I recommend you to bring those shifter and just add a little bit of matcha onto the shift. Shift and dust it on. Perfect. Um, if you want to make this a little bit sweeter, you can also add coconut oil, maple syrup, vanilla syrup. Uh, you can also, for the nighttime, you can add, uh, I know you like this one, um, white, I'm rum to, white rum to make a uh, matcha colada, and you can even add pineapple. Oh, I love that. Mm -hmm. A matcha colada. Gorgeous. That is so pretty. And I love that you used different types of coconut, but it's so simple. Matcha, you, you whip the matcha. You chilled mm -hmm. the matcha and then you combined it with coconuts. So exactly. simple. Does it They're taste delicious. as good as it looks? Yes. And I'm going to be up yeah. till like, I don't know who, what time now. <laughs> well, you might as well stay awake now. Exactly. <laughs> well, um, Rico, I can't thank you enough, um, not only for sharing this gorgeous recipe, but also for staying awake for us. Um, mm -hmm. How long are you in Japan for? Uh, I'm going to be coming back end of this month. I'm very excited to bring my knowledge and all the experience, like rewarding experience I had at the Japanese farm to, you know, Canada. Beautiful. Beautiful. There is nothing like being actually in tea country, is there? Yes. Yeah. This Only cannot be more authentic than Japanese, you know? This no. is so Japanese. <laughs> no, you definitely cannot. Well, lovely Rico, it's um, it's always a pleasure chatting with you. It's lovely to see you. Thank you for being here. Thank you here. so much. Thanks for all this opportunity. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Arigatou gozaimasu. Bye. 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 Mm -hmm. um, what a fun recipe. And I love how um, she layered it, right? I mean, we look at these, we look at these beverages and, um, or we see, you know, these Instagram pictures and we think that it's super complicated, but it's not because it's just about the density of the ingredients that you're using, right? And coconut milk is a little bit thicker, which is why it layered the way that it did. She poured the coconut milk in first, um, and she could have chosen to put in the matcha first and then the coconut milk, but then she wouldn't have had a third layer. So very clever lady, my Rico. She did the coconut milk in first, then she put the matcha on top of that because she was then putting another layer of cream with the coconut milk. So you saw all these different layers going on throughout. So it's actually not as complicated as we tend to think it is when we see these pictures. Um, it's just about thinking about the density of the actual ingredients that you're putting in and um, putting a heavier one at the bottom and then layering it up so that it mixes in a gorgeous way. Beautiful and fun, all of these recipes. Um, I know that I've come away with some really fun ideas and some interesting thoughts. Um, coconut milk, I think I have some. I definitely, you know what, I do. I have a bag of coconut milk in the freezer that I'm gonna pull out. I'm definitely gonna do the floats because those are delicious. Maybe I'll do those on the weekend. Um, the, uh, the matcha combining it with a completely different tea Really, really interesting. Again, not something that I had thought about. Um, use your garden as ingredients, as Amy showed us. We, you know, we, 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 we go to our pantries or we go into stores and that's the only place that we think of using ingredients. But if you have a garden and you grow herbs, then go out and combine those with your teas as well because matching up those flavors and creating interesting blends for yourself is really what this is all about. And then infusing some delicious alcohol with your tea. Of course, you can do a non-alcoholic version if you want. There are so many good non-alcoholic um, uh, or even low in alcoholic um, uh, uh, options out on the market right now in terms of making mocktails. Um, but infusing tea inside of them just adds a whole other level of fun and flavor to it. And that's 
ladies and gentlemen, is my ultimate message as we started. See, all things go full circle. As we started with the conversation with Marika, it's about having fun. Have fun and play. Play with your food. Play with your ingredients. Play with your tea. And don't be afraid to have some missteps because you will. I've had them. I know all of my guests have had them. But it's the missteps that you need to have because at some point you're going to hit a jackpot discovery that's going to be so delicious and so wonderful. Um, before I sign off, I will tell you that two of our guests today are actually going to be doing webinars as well. So if you're interested in our Listen, Learn, Lead program, we have an entire webinar series that we do at the Tea Association. Um, and both Amy Taylor as well as Rico um, will be doing, not together, individually, will be doing webinars for us in the coming months. So take a look at our website, t.ca, for that schedule. With that, lovely to spend a little bit of time with you. The sun is shining in Toronto, and I'm going to take that as a sign to make myself an iced tea and say goodbye. I hope you do the same. All the recipes are going to be on our YouTube channel. Yes, on our YouTube channel, right below the link itself. So just take a look below and uh, click down to grab some of these recipes, and I hope you have fun with them. I will not be here next week because I am going on a real holiday, um, but I will see you back here in two weeks' time. Until then, it's lots of time to experiment with the fun recipes we've already shared. See you soon, everybody, and have a good day. Bye-bye.